Okay, so here is our data. Again, I think, class, I think our explanation here is why is it steep at the beginning? Why is it, why is it dropping very quickly at the beginning? Yeah, there's a bigger temperature difference. Big temperature differences drive a fast rate of heat flow, right? At the end, it's nearly the temperature of the water outside. So although it's dropping, it's not dropping nearly as fast, right? Okay, now, what we've done, because I put a beaker of ice cold water outside, that big complicated formula that you see in front of you actually reduces to this, okay? So the formula becomes T at, at a particular time is the original temperature, and then it's an exponential decay, minus kT. This is some constant, right? Called the decay constant. And what's interesting is the same thing applies, the same rule applies to like radioactive decay. The same rule applies to uh, uh, current flowing off of a charge storage device. This is the time, right? This is our original temperature, or initial, right? And then this is just the temperature at any given time, right? So that's, that's really pretty cool, right? And then let's make a little data table at zero seconds. This is time in seconds, right? At zero seconds, this will be our original temperature. Well, let's check it out. What was it? It was 67.7, wasn't it? Right? 67.7 degrees Celsius. Yeah? I'm going to put the data table over here so I can see it on the camera. So at zero seconds, it was 67.7 .7 degrees Celsius. So this is time. This is temperature. And then let's go through and let's find four data points. This is pretty easy. I'm just going to pick them every 100 seconds. So at 100 seconds, it was 24.9. What is it? 24.9? Right? And at 200 seconds, about halfway through, right? At 200 seconds, it was 12.2. Notice that there's two different sets of numbers. There's the row header, which is 201, but this is the time here, right? 200 seconds, 12.2. And then 300 would be about there. 7.3. So if you're going to just graph this by hand, here you go, right? Okay, you've got the data points that you can graph. And then let's go 400. And then try to make a nice smooth curve through it. 400 is all the way at the end, 5.1. You sure could be. Because that's what I was doing. Right? I'm going to give you another data point in between these guys so that you've got something to put a line through. So let's go back to 50 seconds. 50 seconds is 37.9. I'm just going to put it in there so you've got something because there's a lot of line in between those, right? 37.9. Yeah? Now, what, what should be true about our constant? What, what, what makes it a good constant? If this, if this model works, what should be true about K if I calculate it here, 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 and here? Should be the same because that's why it's called a constant. Yeah? Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. So how do you, what, what, if you look at the thing there, it says, um, uh, where TF is a temperature, right, uh, it says 4. It says to find what K has to be, look at the real data using the examine feature. You need four data points. Didn't we get four data points? Yeah, we didn't even use the examine feature, right? And you should calculate K four different times, right? Students find this confusing. So how do I solve this expression for K? What's the first step for solving this for K? Uh, no, that's not the first step. Yeah, divide by T naught, right? So I'm going to go T divided by T naught is E to the minus KT. And now we can, what do we want to do? Natural. Now we're going to natural. We're going to do what it comes naturally, right? 
and take the log. Thank you. Yeah? Now what do we do to solve for k? Do we divide by negative t? Do we? Yes, we do, right? Okay, so um, let's see. The k is equal to ln of t over t naught. Okay. And then I'm going to do something that's kind of magical. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of the minus sign like this. K equals ln How do I get rid of the minus sign? Whoops. I didn't get rid of the minus sign. Whoops, why did I do that? There we go. Now we're good. What happened to the minus sign? 108, do you remember that? Natural log of A equals negative natural log of 1 over A. Because they're exponents, right? There you go. What is that? Something over T? Not, that's the original one, right? Okay. So for all of our calculations for in this class, right, this original temperature is always going to be 67.7, right? That's our original temperature. Time equals zero. That's this guy here. Da da da. Right. And now you can go ahead and calculate t a bunch of times. I'll show you the t for a hundred seconds. It's going to be k is going to be the natural log of, and then it's um, 67.7 divided by, and at a hundred seconds it was 24.9. Right, divided by, and then it was 100 seconds, right? He doesn't want to exclaim something. You gotta say something juicy, like. I'm leaving. If you think that's teaching, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> You're awful. <laughs> he kicks the door, that's good. I'm taking the bio. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay. When I did this, I got point zero one zero zero something like that. I added you guys. Yeah. Right. It's a bunch of zeros. It, it's going to be something like that, right? Okay. Every calculation you do, all you have to do is change this number and this number, and then you're set. Right. The sixty-seven point seven will always be the same original temperature. Don't change that guy. Okay, now I'm looking at the, at the thing here. It says, answer these questions. Why does the temperature drop off as it does? So specifically, why does it drop off quickly at the beginning, less quickly at the end? Don't answer it, by, by the way, don't answer it this way. Don't say, well, it drops off that way because it's exponential. No, I'm asking you why it's exponential. Yeah? That's like saying, why are you so tall? Well, it's because my head is really far from the ground. <laughs> why is your head so far from the ground? Yeah, so, so why is it, and I want you to use, I want you to use Newton's law of cooling, which is this idea that the heat flow rate depends on the difference of temperature, yes? Okay, the second question, what effect would insulating the beaker have on the graph? What would this graph look like? Draw another graph, right? What would it look like if we insulated the beaker and made it so that, what does insulation do? prevents heat from escaping so quickly, right? So draw a picture of that and then try to answer the question of what, what would K be? Would K be a bigger number or a smaller number? Okay? C, question C. You like your coffee hot, but you like cream in your coffee. Pretend that you like coffee, right? Okay. The phone rings just as you finish pouring yourself a cuppy, cup of a cup of a cough of cuppy. Okay? And you know you'll be on the phone for five minutes. It's Aunt Mildred and she always talks for exactly five minutes. She stops talking mid-sentence at five minutes, hangs the phone up. <laughs> exactly fine. No, that's not that important, right? Okay. Um, and so the question is, do you put the cream in the coffee before and let it sit there? Or do you wait until after the call, letting the coffee sit there, and pour the cream in after? In both cases, the cream comes right out of the refrigerator and pours in the coffee. It has nothing really to do with the temperature difference between the cream and the coffee, but rather it has to do with the temperature difference between the coffee or coffee cream mixture in the room, okay? So, so one of those is going to give you a hotter cup of coffee and I can prove it, okay? Um, so the thing you want to do is think about Newton's law of cooling. <coughs>